Get ready for the Squawking Eagles podcast. The show that covers only the Philadelphia Eagles. Think different. Think Squawking Eagles podcast. Hello and welcome back to the Squawking Eagles podcast. I'm your host, Mike, and today, right now, I'm joined by Miguel. How's it going, buddy? What you going to do when the Philadelphia Eagles go 15 and 2? <laughs> <laughs> that's our, that's Miguel's and I early prediction, uh, 15 and 2. I, you know, looking at the schedule that was released, we're going to go over it, you and I. Mark will probably join us a little bit later. He's coming back from work. And so we're going to discuss and review uh, a little bit of the schedule, how how it's going to play out for the Eagles, uh, how the NFL did them dirty, how the NFL did a lot of the teams dirty, I think, in the NFL this year. That's some, some, some interesting things. We're also going to discuss last week. We missed last week because of scheduling conflicts with Mark. Mark forgot yesterday. Last week was Thursday. Miguel was not going to be on, but Miguel was uh, busy doing something else. And Mark... He kind of forgot it was Thursday, you know. Whatever, whatever. <laughs> I don't know how you forget it was Thursday, but we'll we'll, we'll let it slide. We'll Mark. let it we'll slide. Let it slide. We'll let it slide. He must have had one of those magical gummies before. Most before the most day likely, and yeah. or he was just avoiding the avoiding the the conversation we were going to have. Like the conversation <laughs> him and I were going to have was about Chip Kelly, Deshaun Jackson, and Lashawn McCoy. That's what the 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 conversation was going to be about last week. Right. He didn't show up. I watched the video a couple times. I have a lot to say. I know Miguel and I. See, you and I are on the same page with Chip Kelly. There's really not right. much we can like talk back and forth because we agree. Yeah, we would just agree with each other. Yeah, yeah, it's like it'd be a boring podcast, right? Definitely would be. Got to have Mark. You got to have Chip Kelly's boy in here. Gotcha. Got to have gotcha. the yin to the yang. You know what I mean? You, you do. It's not a podcast without Mark and Chip Kelly. Exactly. It really is. It really is. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to uh, not talk about that until Mark jumps on. He's he promised he's, he knows it's Thursday. He was in South Philly. He said, "Coming driving home." All right. Yeah. If you want to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, it's Squawking Eagles Podcast. If you want to leave us a voicemail, you can rant about anything you'd like. I want to. We want to hear what you have to say. The phone number is 267-293-6963. Call you can find up. that, and you can find that on Inst- in our Instagram page. It's pinned to the top. If you couldn't write that down, all right. Um, so there's a few things that went on this past couple of weeks. Uh, we had a few signings where uh, our rookies are signing their contracts. Uh, the they had a rookie camp really quick where Quentin Mitchell and Deshaun, uh, I want to say Dijon, but it's Cooper Dijon. Uh, they're looking good. They're looking fit. Uh, it looks like Cooper is going to play outside corner, nice. um, and so it's going to be a, it's going to be a battle. There's I think there's 14 <laughs> different corners in camp this year. There's going to be well, a competition. When it's one of your uh, weakest um, positions, and you have really no, well, going into the draft, we really had no future behind uh, Slay and Bradbury, right? Uh, right. So you got to bring in as much talent as you can to maybe help you uh, uh, fill in those positions after after they depart. So I would have to agree. They how we went in and revamped that whole secondary, right? Revamped the whole linebacker core. He has pumped some youth into this team. They mm-hmm. went from a, an older feeling team to a lot younger team. I think they're like the fifth youngest team in the NFL now. Right, which is wild because they were almost like the fifth oldest last year. Right, right. Uh, so it's pretty cool. Well, you know, we are joined by Mark. He is no he loud. Is there he surfaced. is. Mark, it's thanks for running. showing up. Thanks for being here, bud. Thank you. I'm we here. were we are just getting started about talking about the Eagles' schedule and uh, how it's going to fare the Eagles uh, this year. The thing is, that the thing that stood out the most to me, not only that they have three home games in the first 10 weeks, yeah. is that they have a week five bye, which is I super, hate that's the bye. super early. That's super yeah. early. It is, 
But I mean, I mean, the schedule after that isn't really so bad after the bye. Uh, I think the hardest game on is the game at Dallas. After yeah. that, I mean, you go, week 10. Week, yeah, you go, you know, Cleveland, New York, Bengals, Jacksonville. So it's really not. Overall, it's not our toughest schedule. It's no. not the it's not the easiest schedule, and it's not the toughest schedule. They have they are playing a few teams that are, you know, lowly teams of the NFL. You know, the Panthers. I think the Saints are are going to be pretty bad this year. But again, I feel like the NFL like fucked this with the like three one o'clock games, four one o'clock games. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Everything else is a fucking night game or there's, four o'clock game. There's five five prime time games this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, the one, the first remember, game though, of course is in Brazil. But everyone wants to watch us. They do, they except put us. But the other two, there's, there's three teams that have six, six prime time games this year. Go ahead, Mark. Go ahead, Miguel. But wait, Mark, are you going to watch the games because they're going to be behind the paywall? <laughs> no, I'm <they're> not. <laughs> what about what about the announcement that the Christmas Day games will be on Netflix? Yeah, how do you like how do you like that, Mark? I, I don't. I did. I like. It. I like it. I like it. I don't. I wonder if there's going to be commercials though, or if they're just going to stay be. in the stadium and just have you like view the crowd or view whatever is going on in the field at the they'll, time. They'll be which is kind of risque because they do that. You might we might see some things that we normally wouldn't see on a televised mm-hmm. cable yeah, channel. Mm-hmm. No, they want their money, man. They're gonna keep going, or they can steal every penny from you. Exactly. Well, I mean, yeah. I have Netflix, so it's not issue for me. But it's still the fact that, like, <clears throat> what used to be something you could just turn on is now, like, if you don't have Netflix, now you can't watch your team again. If you don't have Peacock, you can't watch your team. There's also an exclusive playoff game that I saw is going to be on. Um, they said wild card games are going to be on. Was it Peacock again? Mm-hmm. There was both of them. I'm like that. No, I'm not doing like that's. I'm getting sick of it. Everything is going that way. EA, video games, literally just announced that they're looking to add advertising in their games now. Mm-hmm. Because this is what happens. You you let one or two things happen. Like, oh, well, it's fine. Like, oh, Prime had it. That's fine. Oh, well, Peacock, ah, you go, ah, it's fine. We'll get it for our, our game. We want to watch. Well, now everyone's jumping on board. And before you know it, you know, even though you pay for Sunday ticket, you're going to get half the games because the rest are going to be behind a paywall. Mm-hmm. For but some other company, it's it's the NFL's fault because they've been leaning this way since they opened their no no no. Their it's, it's the fans' fault for telling the NFL that charge us all you want, we're still going to pay. The more we're willing to go to the games, more we're willing to sign up for and all that. these extra things to pay for it. Trust me, if Peacock goes, hey, well, you know, we want we want to air an NFL game, and the NFL goes, all right, well, it's going to cost you five million dollars to have the rights to it, and the Peacock goes, oh yeah, sure, and the Peacock has no viewership money from it doesn't earn it they're not going to spend the money on that again that's stupid no one's going to keep doing that i don't want exclusive rights something that's costing me money but when everyone goes oh i know it's fine it's like i'll just sign up for that one week well those numbers went up they get more money they get all that ad revenue they're going to make millions and go and then everyone everyone here's go oh why why are more games going to go behind a wall because they're making millions more than they ever made because we're allowing them to we're spending the money it is a business. They're in the business to make money. It's one thing for them to make money, but you have to understand this is a multi-billion dollar corporation at this point. They don't need it. It's us buying and paying for this is showing them that it doesn't matter how much they charge us. We're going to keep spending the money, even when we're poor and can't afford it anymore because the economy is insane. It's not that insane. There's a lot of people spending a lot of money, Mark. The economy, bro. The fact that my neighborhood has houses renting from us three thousand dollars a month, the economy yeah. is insane. That is I, not I, I agree. You are not wrong. The economy is whew, is that's a <laughs> whole nother podcast we won't we don't want to even get to oh, it. I'm sorry. I haven't eaten in two days. I'm hungry. Oh, okay. Funny. Yeah, hungry dogs eat and run faster. So yeah, definitely. Um you know, there there's there's three teams the Jets, the 49ers, and the Cowboys all have six primetime games. Um how do you like that the Jets are going to play the 49ers on Monday Night Football for week one, just like they did last year? I love it. What's and I love the happen? fact that the guy that, that helped tear uh, Aaron Rodgers' Achilles is now right. on the 49ers. Exactly. So <laughs> that's that's going to be great to see. Um, I, I mean, mean, personally, I, I think it's just bad programming. 
You're going to have two of the worst teams in the NFL go up against each other on a Monday night game to start the season. Yay. San Francisco with the Jet, the Jets? Yeah. You got a trash fan base and a trash team. <laughs> 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 all right uh hangry that's mark, is here. mark. Yeah, that's hangry why we mark need mark is here, here. <laughs> hangry mark is here um well yeah, so did you guys did you guys watch the video on the eagles releasing the schedule like the the little um uh psyche psychiatric evaluation of the fan base and like word association <laughs> with the teams that they're on the schedule it was pretty oh, funny if you haven't seen it it's hilarious. A lot of teams were doing that. I think the 49ers did something. Not the 49ers, oh, the, every, the Rams. Everybody did something different, yeah. except uh, there's two teams that did the same exact thing. Uh, oh. I forget which team it was right now. The West Coast teams, so I can't really think of it. But it was funny to see. Some of them were really good. Some of them were... The Cowboys. Like The, the Cowboys. Cowboys were... Weird. Cowboys. I, like, you sent it to me. I'm like, that's just weird. Like It was just yeah. weird. Yeah. Like They FaceTimed other people like people who are fans, and celebrities who are fans of teams and they just stood there like just stared at them yeah, at there, like yeah. that's about right like it, it's kind of it's kind of what they did this whole offseason right <laughs> they just sat there <laughs> they're just still standing there <laughs> that's exactly what they did they, they, they kind of they're i guess that's on brand that's completely on right. brand for them they're staying they're staying they're staying consistent that's what we have to and say you know very what consistent very consistent. if you are a parent and you're tired of walking around with your kids for Halloween this year, just dress up as a cowboy and stand still. Stand still. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, this, the schedule is kind of, you know, it's, we're not going to go, we, we are, we're not going to just, we're not going to break it down week by week now because, uh, Oh, we're not going to play the win loss win win loss win game? Not yet. We're not going to do that yet. We'll, ah. do, we'll, we'll do that closer to the beginning of the season because, okay. uh, yeah, there, a lot of things could still, still change uh, with this team, and we want to make sure we're accurate in our. Even though we know it's going to be fifteen to two, even though we know that's what it's going to be. I say, I know, I know we're not breaking it down. I've seen a lot of people have us between twelve or eleven wins, five yeah. or six losses. Yeah, the amount of people I've had seen that have us losing to the Falcons. A lot of people have us losing to the Falcons. I'm surprised by that. When's the last time you saw Kirk Cousins win on primetime? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, 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 it's not gonna happen. Exactly. It's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. Exactly. And, and it's like the second game of the season, so uh, you know he's still heated about them drafting the um, Michael Penix. Uh, yeah, he's gonna yeah. be. Yeah, he's, he's gonna be still bitter at that point. Yeah, he might that even actually. Be that <laughs> might be the 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 switch. Maybe on any of the primetime games, they'll play Penix. Oh, so they have a chance to win. They could. They could. They <laughs> could hey, do hey. that. There's a a couple of games we're looking forward to is the uh, the uh, the Baltimore game. That's going to be a, a fun game to watch. Baltimore is going to be a good game. It's going to see you know your team Jacksonville is going to be in the town. Jacksonville's coming back to go. Go Dougie P. Uh, and then you know Kenny Pickett's old team's going to be here. The Steelers. That's that should be a good game. And mm -hmm. then you go and go to Cincinnati. Joe Burrow, if, if he's healthy, hopefully healthy at week eight. That, that should be a good game too. Yeah, well, I mean, if they don't trade away Higgins and uh, that pass rusher they were trying to get rid of, right. maybe it's a good game. Yeah. I doubt it, though. I did see that the Steelers have uh, a bit of a schedule at the end of their season. Yeah, they got a hard schedule. The Steelers. Ravens, Browns, Bengals, Browns, us, Ravens, Chiefs, Bengals. Yeah, they could go like 0-8 oh and, oh and to end the Man. season there. That's going to be a tough one. Like uh, Again, like, it's the schedulers didn't do the Steelers any justice with that kind of schedule. Uh, Probably they did the, the entire NFL justice, to be honest. I mean, I'm looking around at the schedule, and you know, we've got, like I said, like we talked earlier, we have like almost no one o'clock games. And yeah. look, no matter who, how your fan base is between you know the Jets and the Niners, what a weird thing to do to have back to back years, same teams playing each other on a Monday night. Like, I yeah. would think that you should see a rotation of teams so that every team has a spotlight at a different time of year, every single year. Mm -hmm. So it kind of, you know, the whole world gets to, you know, you get to view your fan, like your team at yeah. different times. So each person gets a chance to like kind of experience that. Cause Hey, maybe, you know, maybe early in the year, maybe like you know, early September, you work a job or something where like, you know, you can only make a few games. 
and uh, you know, like I know my buddy who's in the post office, once if ever comes around, he is not available Sundays, period. Like just ever. So if your team always plays a priority game Sunday, I know th- uh, Miguel here. I mean, you miss how many games every year? It's insane. I don't. I try. I really try not to miss any games unless I'm on vacation. And even though I'm on vacation, I'm about to be. Even when I work two jobs, I told my job Sundays is a religious holiday. I'm not able to work. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Yeah, that's you know that's the right way to do it. But this is the yeah, thing, though. Can, so. The a lot of these games that are you know we have a lot of away games in the beginning of the schedule, and a lot including of the our home first games, home game, right? Including our first home game. Are a lot of the the home games are at the end of the season. It's going to be cold out there. It's going to be cold. You know, you know the uh, the uh, the week fourteen game against the Panthers. It's going to be a it's going to be a cold game. Speaking of Panthers. Somebody just did the math. You're going to love this, Mark. You can go to every single uh, Panthers game for a total of $685 for every single game, wow. for a home game. $685. Like one ticket to the Eagles. Right? It's cheaper to go to an, a Panthers game than t- is to watch it on TV because of all the paywalls. <laughs> <laughs> Like yeah. that speaks like that literally just hammers at home. I, I, I thought I you'd like, thought you'd like oh, that. God. That's insane. That yeah. is wild. Like that's so unreal. Yeah, it's over a thousand dollars. A thousand dollars. You know what? Now that you now that you mention that, I want to see what uh, the Baltimore tickets are looking like because they're actually oh, not bad. I already looked trip? at going to that one. Yeah, road trip. I've trip? already started looking. I'm down. Road trip. My oh. sister's a Baltimore fan, so I was looking at maybe that one. That one's not bad. I think they're about. Two hundred bucks uh, for okay. decent, like front row seats in the second level. So you're like, that's where I like to sit. I like second level, front row. You kind of get a great view of everything. Oh, now's the uh, time to get the tickets. They were about like one eighty five, two hundred bucks. <clears throat> and um, <laughs> then we looked at the Eagles home games. The cheapest was the Thursday night against the Commanders, and it was still cheaper to go to the Commanders Eagles game in Washington than it is to buy. The cheapest tickets for the Eagles. Oh, hundred percent, hundred percent by a margin, by speaking, a sizable margin. Speaking of tickets, if you are a Seat Geek or you have a Seat Geek or you don't know if what Seat Geek is, it's a platform where you can buy tickets to any kind of sporting event: baseball, basketball, football, concerts. And if you have never created a account like with uh, with Seat Geek, you can use our code Squawking Eagles. And you'll get twenty dollars off that purchase. So you swap as the promo code, and you can get some twenty dollars off those tickets. Save that money. Yeah, I'm looking down level behind the veteran. Uh, the visitors bench is like eight hundred bucks, and that's in the first level. A piece. A piece. Well, of course, it's going to be the the, the prices are going to probably go up also as well because of Eagles of are going to town. Yep, and up high, like their five hundred section is like two two thirty. Yeah, that's yeah, that's well. We'll have to wait closer, but we might have to talk about doing that. Maybe C Geek can hand hand us some free tickets or Tick Pick. We, we, or or should Tick Pick just uh, just start following the Instagram page? So all right, uh, let's go Tick Pick. Let's I go Tick Pick. Tick Pick. Tick Pick. Tick Pick. I don't get right, it confused so... with Tick Picks. That's a whole different <laughs> other website. <laughs> that is a whole different other website. <laughs> so. Um, why we're really here for this podcast today is to talk to wait, you. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, oh. Before before we change uh, the 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 story on the schedules here, I w- I would like to call out to the red carpet. Okay, one here we go. Of my my coworkers, Giants fan, to the carpet because Mr. Derek Myers is a Knicks fan, and I believe that, and and this is my 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 true sentiments. I don't know if I said it on a podcast before, but. You know how um, uh, teams of of our Eagles rivals always say like the Eagles are most, the most annoying fans and blah 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 blah, right? Yeah, hundred percent. This last two years, the Knicks fan base has become the Eagles fan base in 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 my eyes. To me, you know what I mean? Like they are one of the most annoying fan bases right now because they win one series against a sixty five percent Sixer team, right? They're right. taking the Pacers uh, to the limit here, I guess. 
Well, the Pacers um, also play the play worst defense ever. The, the Pacers yes, play terrible well, defense. Yeah, they do. They do. And and they still managed to win two games. Um, yeah. This man had the nerve to after the schedule came out to say that the that the the New York Giants with their horrible throwback jerseys and all. Let's let's not even get into that conversation. Are going to win the trophy? I said trophy. What trophy? Are what you trophy? talking about the participation trophy? Because that's the only trophy that they're going to win. He proceeded on saying that he that they they're going to have a breakout year, and that. Um... <laughs> Wait, you said you said who? My this Giants. is my coworker, Derek, Giants fan, Derek Meyer. The Giants, right? The Giants, the Giants. <laughs> The gi- yeah, like so, like the little giants, what, what, like what a high fuck, school team. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm, I thought he was talking about the San Francisco Giants for a little bit. I, yeah, I mean, maybe. I, they, and then yeah. I proceeded to ask him, "Does your wife know you smoke crack? Because you, you are not thinking clearly. You are a coworker. I'm a supervisor, and now I got to submit you for a drug test, my guy, because <laughs> you are talking so reckless. <laughs> so, you know." With that being said, I told him to put money where his mouth was, right? I said, oh, you feel so confident that your team is going to win the Super Bowl next year. Throw out a number there. I'll bet whatever number you throw out there. He he hesitated. Uh, You know, and I said, the number that you throw out will show me how confident that you are. You want to you want to guess the amount that he threw out there? Like money, like how much money he was put on the Giants to it. Uh, if I you're so say, confident, I would say if you're so confident, five hundred dollars at least. Right. Okay. Thank you. He this guy comes bucks. back twenty five bucks. Oh no! <laughs> I'm like, no. you're talking all this trash on this mediocre confidence, and then bet twenty five dollars on this bet, my guy, my guy. No, no. bro. No. If they went, <clears throat> I'm looking at their schedule right now. Uh-huh. If they go two and six to start the season, first eight games, I'd be like, well, look at their schedule. I get it. That's honestly what I think of when I see their schedule. If they went one and seven, I wouldn't be surprised. If they went 0 oh and eight, I'd be like, hmm, commanders did something. <clears throat> if they win more than four games in their first eight games, I'll pay that man five bucks. <laughs> <laughs> if they go 500 in the first eight games, that he can have five bucks like that. What? What? Yeah. Super Bowl, I, bro. What? I, well, had to, I had to put this guy on blast because it's just like the the this Knicks uh, run in the playoffs have given this New York fan base a fucking uh, um, uh, ego that carries over into the Giants fan base, which I, I I don't I don't understand. Well, he's got an open invitation. Giants, October twentieth. Come on the podcast. Talk all this talk. We've never had a Giants fan on this on the podcast. Right. We're all too afraid to get on here. We've so, had we've uh, had a few Giants fans talk to us outside of the podcast, but they don't want right. to come on to the podcast. You have an invitation now, my my guy. <laughs> yeah, I know we're not doing. I know we're not doing the talk. Eagles schedule right now. I know we're not doing the Eagles schedule right now. But mm-hmm. real quick, just want to break this down. Um, yeah. First off, who who's the running back for the Giants? I have no idea. I, I asked him who I asked him who the backup quarterback was because I'm like Daniel Jones is definitely not having a breakout year. I was like, who's your backup quarterback? He didn't even know the answer to that. <laughs> who's who, who's their top two wide receivers? Oh, well, Malik Davis, right? There. Yeah. All right. Oh yeah. All right. So they got neighbors. Okay. They've got right. some one guy. One guy. All right. We got one guy. One guy on offense. Solid. All right. All right so now let's just real quick neighbors mm-hmm. first season with 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 quarterback. All right. Now, granted, I know we got JJ. In the Vikings, and I know he's gonna have a new quarterback to work with, so it's gonna be kind of similar situations. But game one, Vikings Giants, loss. I would I would say that's a sixty percent chance the Vikings win that. Yeah. yeah. The only thing that's gonna hurt them is that their quarterback is an overrated piece of shit out of Michigan. All right. <clears throat> have you seen him throwing passes in practice? Not great. Garbage. No, not good. Absolutely not horrendous. Not he's good. a. Not I've how. If, thankfully, we do this podcast, and everyone can go. Hey, look, he called it. Again, <laughs> you're welcome. Right here, you're um, welcome. Giants, Commanders, fifty-fifty, in my opinion, because the Commanders reloaded. The Commanders have a lot of players on that team. They did. They if did. anyone has a better season than they did last year out of our division, and it's not us, it's going to be the Commanders. 
Like, that's it. Yeah. Not I that mean, they're going to beat us, but I think they're going to have a better season than last year. I think the last pod uh, that we did, uh, Mike came out with um, – uh, I forget what it was, Mike. You did something with the schedule or the, uh, the divisions or something like that. And I said I think that the Redskins would have a better season than uh, – I don't know if it was Dallas or the Giants, one of the two, but maybe both. Yeah, they could okay. have a better season than, than Dallas. But I, I think they could. To be nice to the Giants, we'll put them at okay. one and one right now, okay? Okay, yeah. So I'm just going through the first eight games with you guys real quick. The Browns. Mm-hmm. Okay. They'll lose that. That's the lose that game. I feel like the Browns win that game. Yeah. yeah. All right. So one and two. Mm-hmm. Then they got to face the Cowboys. As much as we hit the Cowboys, the Giants are beating the Cowboys. Right. No. All right. So they're one and three. Then they got to go to play C- the Seahawks in Seattle. Well, oh, in Seattle? Well, no, they're, they're not. Lost. They're not winning that. All right. So they're one and four. Then they got to play the Bengals. Lost. They could pull. They could if, pull that if, one off. If Barrel <laughs> lost. I'm thinking most chance they're one and five. Right. Yeah. Then, yeah. then the birds come to town. Well, they're not going to beat the Eagles. They're not going to beat us. So that's one and six. Then, then they have to go play the the Steelers. Now the Steelers aren't great, but Tomlin is is a coach that happens to win a lot. Yeah. So I'd say it's another 50-50 game. I'll be nice. I'll give it to the Giants. All right. So give it, they are give now, it to the Giants. Two. Give it to the Giants. They're, they're two and six. Yeah. That's eight games. <laughs> <laughs> they're two and six guys. Like, that's not a Super Bowl run. If I, if I if I can say so, that's not a Super right? Bowl run right there. Yeah, that's definitely not a Super Bowl run. Like even Derek. if I nice the hell out of them and say, okay, they beat the Vikings, the Commanders, the Browns. Okay, that that's three wins, and they lose the Cowboys, the Seahawks, the Bengals, and the Eagles. And then let's say they beat the Steelers. They're, they're four and four. Eight games yeah, in, but they're not going to beat the Browns. I don't think they'll beat the Browns. I don't think they're going to beat the Browns. I don't think they're going to be. I, I honestly wouldn't be surprised if they lost to the Steelers. Like, I don't yeah. think they're going to beat the Vikings, even if the Vikings have arguably the worst quarterback in their division now. Yeah. Like, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. How about Bowl? The, yeah. I think I you actually think, need to it. submit that guy for a drug test. Like, I, I, what? I told him I'm, I'm like, gonna have to, man. I'm like, this is this is just crazy. I don't know what to do. <laughs> as your super as as his supervisor, you have to take into account maybe he might be doing something. I and look, have the, to. I'm concerned have to, for his health. <laughs> concerned for his, his mental health. And it's not gonna be it's not gonna get any better when it, after those first eight weeks. Nope, not at all. Look, I would say Eagles, Niners, Detroit. I'm trying to think of who else I'd even consider for the NFC to even be worth like to have a chance to make it there. I don't know if there's any other NFC that can make it any team that I think can actually make the Super Bowl on the NFC. Yeah. I, well, in the AFC, you, okay, you got someone else? No, no, I'm just, okay. I don't think so. So, the AFC, the Chiefs, the Dolphins, um, I'm trying to think of who else is actually decent in the AFC. Well, Baltimore. Baltimore, Baltimore, yeah, yeah, Baltimore. Hello. Who? Yeah. Hello. Nah, not this year. They've lost no. too much. You lost your starting receiver. You lost starting running back. You lost, like who do they have All left? Right, well, who's coming out the AFC? What? Uh, East. Jets. Miami. Miami. Miami's like team them. is lo- that team is looking better than ever, and, and their schedule is easy down. as hell. Yeah, but their schedule's kind of a cakewalk this year. Right. A lot of their but games though like, aren't indoors either. Neither oh. one of those teams sound to me like n- neither one of those groups. Texas. Texas. Houston, Houston, yeah, Houston's are, yeah. I think Houston's going to be maybe, good this year. Maybe I think they'll. I think they're going to continue to be a playoff team. I don't know if they're quite ready to make a push for the whole thing. But, I don't uh, think they need to make a push. I think they just they just win the division and get in. Yeah, yeah. I think they just get in. But I, I'm saying like uh, in my just going off the you know my personal op- pre- uh, opinion, the mm-hmm. six teams I just named three from each. I guess there's four from four from the AFC. Was it uh, either way? Six, seven. Who's ever I named? If you're not a, t- a fan of one of those teams. I really don't believe anything you say if you say your team's going to win the Super Bowl this year. And I mean, I'm a diehard Eagles fan. I know what it's like to be like, let's go, guys. I still, I'm still not like, I, I'm super hyped for our team, super hyped for the year. Still not like going to say, like, I know I put the Eagles as, as a potential, but I'm not like, Eagles are going to win it this year. They're so good. I'm like, hey, I think we have a slight chance to make it there because I but think see, we can improve. That's a but difference, we got though. A lot. The Eagles fan base is a smart fan base. We know when our team is good enough to beat a juggernaut or not. You know what I mean? Like, and we're honest about it. Like, we all know, you know, 
back in the early 90s, you know, the or even in the early 2000s, Patriots come in, it's a chance we're going to lose that game, you know? So, but Giants fans don't work that way for whatever reason. I guess because they've had so many lucky moments like the helmet catch and, yeah. you know, much, the OBJ much. catch that, you know, they have a little bit of luck on their side, whereas we've had zero luck and misery for all I know is that our secondary might very well be one of the best in the NFL this year. Our right. linebacker yeah. is better. <clears throat> we were just our talking D-line about that before you signed on. We talked about how the Eagles have 14 defensive uh, secondary players on the roster right now. There's going to be a competition right now again with defensive backs. I think you see I think you see Cooper DeJean take nickel away from Maddox. I think you still see Slay start, and I think you're either going to see I think you're going to see a fight between Ringo, Ricks, and Quinion for the other starting spot. You'll see CJ GJ start at safety, and probably Blankenship. And you'll see a ro- I think you'll see a rotation in the second uh, you, corner spot. You didn't even say anything about Bradbury. Who's that? <laughs> I think he's a he plays left bench. Oh, he's be, gonna. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're talking about the the bench warmer guy we got from the Giants. So he's alone, gonna right? be this. He's gonna be the most expensive bench warmer in the league. He's. I, I don't what? see him making making the making the field. I, I, what yeah. if we feed him a lot of pasta, get that ass, so he covers up a little more space, warms up more of the bench, you know, <laughs> larger footprint. <laughs> You know? It's gonna be a, it's gonna be fun to watch. It's gonna be fun to see how this defense, you know, Fangio takes these young group, young guys, and uh, molds them into his defense. I'm excited to watch it. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how our defense is at all. You know, with with Fangio running it, I'm interested to see what his take is. Being the the guy who who runs the system, people said is a pretty good system, and then no one else can seem to run it. Um, I think we got a good group of players. You know, I'm interested to see how it pans out. We got. We all know we have great offensive players. Yeah. You know, we know we got a little bit of question from the O line this year, but I, th- I think that we've got. I mean, with Stoutland there, I, I trust the the line. Uh, I'm just saying, if you, even if I wasn't an Eagles fan, based on the fact that I got friends who aren't Eagles fans, and they all kind of say the same thing, I'd say the Eagles should be in the talk of a potential team at the end of the season, even yeah. after last year's collapse. I think we recover. Yeah. However, from the root of this conversation, you couldn't convince me with millions of dollars that the Giants are even remotely in the conversation. I will be surprised. Honest to God, I, I, I don't know if they're near 500. I don't know. I didn't look at the rest of their schedule, but they're not starting off the season strong. Let's just say they'll be drafting uh, their franchise quarterback next year. That's what they'll be doing. You know yeah. what? Who could that be? <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, you know. Oh, Quinn Ewers, right? All right. So uh, last week, you we missed last week, Mark, because uh, of, I'm an idiot. of uh, different time zones. I guess we were in. You forgot for what day it was. I, I don't know what happened. It's been. That, but, I'll be honest. This is the first time I've turned on my computer since our last recording. Oh, wow. wow. I have been so yeah, insane. I, I usually come home and go right to bed. Like I'm just been busy as hell. Been a lot of work. Man. Work Working. and the little one had a bunch of things come up at once because she had the you know dance recitals. So we had rehearsal practice yeah. and then the dance itself and soccer on top of it. Then I started playing hockey again, so my schedules had some games in it. So it's been it's been a busy schedule. Like old man tomorrow. hockey, huh? Play yeah, old man it's hockey. been fun. Been feeling healthier. Nice. Got a game tomorrow. Game on Sunday. So nice. It's good exercise. I can't I can't do the whole gym rat thing. I'm you know Miguel impressed to keep up with it man that's just something i can't do you could say hey mark i'll pay 100 bucks every day to go to the gym i'll do it for like a week and i'll stop <laughs> well I literally just, I do can't. it for three weeks it becomes a routine so you'll be yeah they, they say that i've done it for like I'm, i've tried it going all as much as i could when i paid for it when i first signed up started going had a buddy go with me and we would the moment we would get there I'd be like why am i here like i just i hate going to a gym and, and then as yeah. soon as I had the opportunity to stop going, I stopped going. Still paid for it for like another year. And then I finally was like, hey, let's First stop wasting money. 
All right, so last week there was a uh, a podcast YouTube video came out. Oh, I didn't watch it. The the twenty five ten show with Deshaun Jackson and Lashawn McCoy. Uh, last week they talked about um, a certain coach that we uh, we had as the Eagles coach for a few years. Uh, I believe his name was uh, Chip Kelly. <laughs> and I think Mark, you have some, you know, you've got a different perspective on Chip Kelly and his tenure at the, with the Eagles. And Deshaun you, Jackson and Shane McCoy had a few, a, a few good takes on his tenure with the Eagles. Uh, mm. Yeah, he felt, you know, look, granted, when you when you're watching the video, they they did say that. Where their their first re their first reactions with Chip weren't so great. Like they he, they wanted they wanted they wanted Sean they wanted Shane McCoy to show up at the first practice and the first get together, but he didn't because uh, a death in the family, so he didn't show up. You know, and Chip Kelly didn't like that. Chip Kelly wanted him to be there. And then there was another thing with Deshaun Jackson he got getting off getting off on the wrong foot with him, and so that was kind of like a strike against them. Hmm. I can understand. That. Look, I'll look, play- look. I'll, I'll simplify this real quick for you. Let me just make this real easy for all the people that are that are dumb out there. I mean, I'm just gonna ask a few questions. You guys tell me, good decision, bad decision, and, and we'll take it from there. All right. Yes. Lane Johnson. Good, good, good player to have on the Eagles, right? Great decision. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Lane. Lane Johnson. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Malcolm Jenkins. I mean, he was traded agent. to the Eagles. Yeah, or, or traded. traded. He, yeah, he traded. Was, no, he was a free agent. We signed him as free a free agent. agent. Okay. So, so we won that to get him. I think he was a phenomenal player. Still, like, but in his career, not just the Eagles, he had a great, great career. Okay. Yeah, I think he was good. All right, right. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Would you guys say that Jeff Stalin is a pretty good guy to have on the Eagles? Because I feel yes. like he's done a really good job with the Eagles. Okay. Thank you, Chip Kelly. Uh, mm-hmm. I think Deuce Staley did a really good job when he was here with us. But he was here before Chip Kelly. No, no, no. He was named running back coach. Uh, thank you, Chip Kelly. Um, I don't know assistant. how much he had to do with stuff. No, that, that was. Bad. But let's not forget the horrible ones too. What's uh, the, what's the, what's the linebacker that they drafted uh, that turned out to be nobody? Marcus Smith. That there was you not... go. Thank you, Mike. I forgot um, his name. Yeah. Or how about the trade to Miami for the linebacker that? Pico Alonzo? Uh, yeah, that guy. You mean Bad the guy trade. who had an interception that looked like uh one interception, Mark. Odell Beckham? One interception. Yeah. Look, one uh, interception. He, got, he traded Sean Le- injury, McCoy. He, he traded LaShawn McCoy, who led what who was who one was in the year second hand of a, removed uh, uh, end of his contract. So he was gonna be he never once eclipsed his running yards ever again after leaving here. He never was the same player. We he, like, but did you get the, did you get I'm value sorry, back? We, you didn't get yeah, value on, back yeah. with Pico but, Alonso. However, you can say that, except you look and go, did we or did we not eventually end up with the players in the right spot to then win the Super Bowl? But that wasn't because of Chip because Kelly. Of Chip, I, I, 100% it was. it was. No, because that was the fucking um, uh, Howie Roseman coming out from the fucking basement like Batman and fucking flipping the whole roster out. Bro, if you want to look back on what Howie Roseman brought to this roster until recently, come on, yeah, my guy. Saying, I burn dude, him down. I'm not saying that Howie Roseman has every decision has been perfect. I've pointed that out multiple times. Agreed. You consistently want to point out that everything that Chip Kelly did for this no, organization no, no. was 100% like gold. Like, no, no not, dude. Not he served everything. your shit on a silver platter and you loved it. Look, not everything he did was great. All right. I didn't like his pick for Nelson Aguilar. All right. I didn't like that. I liked Zach Ertz. You know, I liked Lane Johnson. Like, there's definitely things I like. There's things I didn't like. I'm not saying that we got the best value for the trades. You know, I understand that, you know, we probably could have got better for McCoy. We probably could have got something different, you know, for the, for everything going on with Jackson. The story. I'm saying... The story that... for the tr- the trade for the McCoy. Before you move on past McCoy ahead, and the trade, the story was that they call Chip Kelly called the bu- the Buffalo Bills and they said, "Are, are you interested in Le- in Shady McCoy?" 
And they said, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll call you back or whatever it was. And so Chip Kelly called back and they asked, what would you, what would you be interested in? And Chip Kelly said, Kiko Alonso. Mm -hmm. And there was a pause. And Rex Ryan goes, Kiko Alonso, yeah. And that's it, just Kiko Alonso. And he said that was the easiest trade he has ever seen in the in the history of his of his tenure as a coach or a football player, or whatever. That's all it was—a straight up Kiko Alonso, Shady McCoy trade. It was the easiest thing he'd ever seen, and he felt like okay. he fleeced fleeced him. And Kiko played what two Couple seasons games with the Eagles. Injured. He got injured, and then they, and then how he sent him to Miami, and where he died, like just like right. just like Shady McCoy felt like he got sent to Buffalo to die. Exactly, and, and and it's not even so much of what he did as far as personnel; it's what you hear coming out of the locker room about the whole that they couldn't wear black socks because Chip Kelly demanded that they wear white socks, or the fact that you know he wanted to introduce a sports science, but was like very like treating these kids like they were kids like they were forced to wear things to monitor their sleep and hydration and report to where they were going like the way that they that they he treated that that locker room is is the most the the, the most disturbing thing to me about it like everything okay, that you so hear coming out was bad look the problem is though is how you're hearing it because like i said before every team does what chip did now what chip did sure. was the first he did it. I will say he implemented he it wrong. I don't like, and, and I understand that. Yeah, I heard the same thing out of Oregon that they were a little like, you know, he, he'd be a little, you know, touchy on, on what they wore. And he, he tells them, look, guys, you got you to gotta dress this way. You got to wear it. And, and one thing I got it with college. He wanted them to look respectable. He wanted them to, you know, come to come to work, as he would call it, like you were, you know, coming to a nice job. You're coming, dress nice, come and feeling nice, work hard, play hard, win games. And that's what they did over there in college. He came to the NFL, and I'm not, and I agree. I am saying, yeah, th like I said, I don't agree. With, I don't say everything he did was right. Obviously, when you're in the NFL, it's a little harder to deal with because player they're, they're grown men now. They make their own money, and they don't want to be told how to dress. You know, I I understand that Chip wanted things to be a little more uniform, wanted things to be there. He didn't come across it the right way. He could have definitely come about it in a much more easy going, like, hey guys, like this is something I like to do. I, I like when we all kind of work forward as, as a group, look nice, feel nice, play nice kind of mentality. He didn't do it that way. He kind of came. It was a little weird about it. I get it. I know the sports science thing, you know, players didn't like it then because, again, he was the first one to really bring it in as hard as he did. He brought in a little bit of an overkill to start, didn't kind of ease it in. And while it's become a, 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 you know, entirely adopted program now, everywhere, every team, college to the NFL, so I like what he did, just not how he did it when it comes to that. And I, I get that. And some players didn't act well, act didn't react well to it. Look, I'm not saying like I said I didn't say everything was great. And you're you're right. There's definitely things that were a mistake. But I also want to say that the way the players reacted to the things between his mentality and their mentality, it led to some bad, bad blood. And the fact that like you hear players who like call him racist or say like, Oh, the way he did this was, was wrong. And it's like, I, 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 I don't think he was racist. I, I just definitely think, don't think he was racist. I just think he didn't know how to talk to the youth. I just think he had, uh, that, that was his ultimate, uh, disconnect. Like he's probably one of the greatest football minds, the way that he changed football and the impact in that first season. Right. But he just didn't, he didn't translate in the locker room to these guys. You know what I mean? Like, I think, and, and, and I mean, you could break it down in all sorts of ways, but I think if we would have kept the Sean Jackson, I think the, the Sean Jackson would have finished his career here as a Philadelphia Eagle. Mm -hmm. And I think whatever his um, um, stats would have been, I think they would have stood the test of time. Like that guy is, was one of a playmaker. He took the, as long as he was healthy, as long as he stayed healthy, as long as he was healthy. Yes, I agree. Which wasn't, you know, Towards the end of the career, more so, more yeah. more often injured than not, but still one of the fastest players. I think he he even said that he still can outrun a lot of these guys. Just health is, you know, mm -hmm. once you get to a certain age, man, just things, hamstrings and calf yeah, muscles start same. popping and shit. Yeah. Oh yeah, and you know, I'm not gonna argue that either. I think you know, I, I think Deshaun Jackson played a wealth of, uh, you know, as, as a player, he he was a great positional guy who who did amazing things with his speed, and he actually, I think he's proof that. You know, kind of like Tyreek Hill, you have those players who are fast and can play the game. 
And you've got players like John Ross, who no, not to you know hit you with a stray, my guy, fastest guy to come out of the combine un- until very until you know this year. He's on the Eagles uh, do a squad right now. Thing couldn't do a thing in the NFL. I don't understand it. How do you outrun everybody and not just dominate? Because it's not all. It's not always about speed. I think Tyreek and I think you're right with Jackson. I think that's that's a you know they are unique players who who do dominate with their speed because they know how to play it right. And yeah, I'm not going to say, yeah, I'm not going to argue that. I think, yeah, if he had stayed, I think maybe he, he stays along. Maybe he's part of the winning Super Bowl team. You never know. Uh, we can't change his past. But I will say the fact is, <clears throat> what I do see is that both players who run that podcast went on to play elsewhere. And now yeah. they're doing a podcast bitching and moaning about a coach eight years ago. Well, they feel like they can talk about it now. They feel like that's well, the thing. They, yeah, they can well, feel, they can talk feel about, it, talk about time, it now. But I'm saying at the same time, like, all right. They're hurt. They're really hurt. They're, they, they wanted to stay here. They did not. They were not interested in going anywhere else. LaShawn McCoy even said on his podcast, he said that he was not interested in going anywhere. He had a, a, a setup with his, 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 uh, his ex-wife and his, and his kids. He didn't want to go and move to Buffalo and, and – Try to figure out yeah. that kind of uh, and, and arrangement. But at you the don't same time, that. but at the same time, this is a business. I mean, Ertz yeah. didn't want to go anywhere. Ertz played great for us. Yeah, mm. it's still it's we still have an Ertz. I, I, would, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised. That either. I, I, didn't I that wouldn't either. be surprised with Howie. And I know this is not going to feel well to a lot of people. I wouldn't be surprised if we see Hertz move on to another team in the next ten years. If he has another season like last season. He'll he'll be within the next year and a half. But I mean, I think we could win two more Super Bowls with him, and I think we'd still see him leave in ten years. Within ten years, you're not going to see years? him stay. Yeah, well, well cool. you mean that's a big window though. Ten years. Well, I mean, how yeah, long was I'm, Brady with the Patriots? Fifteen. Uh, I'm just saying, like, he could still be playing well, and I still think you see us lose him. Um, I think yeah. you're getting to a point I, where, like, I, don't, I like, know a lot of people. I know a lot of people don't 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 probably don't agree with this one, but I think where the Eagles made the wrong turn was letting uh, Andy Reid leave. When Andy Reid left, and then they went on the hiring spree and hired Chip Kelly. I I, I believe Andy Reid should have stayed as coach because he was going through a difficult time. He was trying to refine himself. He was. And his kid was kid was just uh, passed his away. Kid just died, just and the great. whole drug thing with so, him. I won't. So I I, I feel like that's. I, I, if if I could be a fly on the wall and hear what Howie regrets doing, is probably that. I think that's I, the biggest regret. I won't. As- I don't want to entirely disagree with you in that sense because obviously I think Reed was a, it was a big part of the culture here for many years. Right. But I will say I think him going to a different city helped him on his recovery and helped him become the coach that he is today. So I think both programs benefited by him leaving as much yeah. as it, it hurts because we see how great he's been since i think we as a city were at a point where we had been with him for so long and we went through his players i think we needed the change we yeah. got a, a, a crazy change in ship that again i understand a lot of people don't agree with and look we only stuck with him for a couple of years we moved on from him and then we went on and got dougie who we had won a super bowl and we quickly realized like it ain't happening again we moved on from him now we got Sirianni. We had a really good season with him. We had a really rough season with him. We're interested to see how this next season goes. Uh, you know, but I look at it and go, I like the team we have right now. I would say if you don't get rid of Reed, if you don't have Chip make the moves he makes, we don't have the team we have today. Even, yeah, if, well, the, even if the moves yeah, didn't 100%. look good then and it hurts the players in the past, look, we got a Super Bowl. We're you know, we've been to the playoffs multiple times in, in the past decade, many, many times. I'm very happy with the way the team has been, even with last year's falling apart failure, as much as that sucked. I like the the culture of our team right now. I think we've got a really good build. I think, you know, for once I'm looking at it going like, hey, for the next decade, I expect the Eagles to, for the most part, be contenders. That's awesome. I'm really glad I get to be part of this fan base for this time because I know I know the Eagles went through years of junk years. How many years did we go as not a contending team? How many years did we go where like players are booing the team half the time? Right? It's a good yeah. spot to be right now. They have a good place. Are, uh, uh, brown bags on our heads. Exactly. Yeah, you know, I've I've I got a question. Like, 
yeah okay all those things that those if if any if any stays and all those other things so you know you do all that stuff you in you know say 2020 you read say you redraft 2020 jalen hurts isn't even on this team and any read or not he's not even on this team in 2020 if everybody well, if you if you know if you know what you know now in 2020 he gets drafted in the first round he doesn't get drafted in the second round i mean do we still take rager <laughs> no, hundred percent. No, I don't know. I, no, you say, well, we don't no. have hurts. Well, maybe we do have hurts. Maybe we just drafted no. him sooner instead. No, maybe we have know. JJ. I don't know. Yeah, like the, a lot of these guys who got drafted in the beginning of the the first uh, first uh, the first round of twenty twenty, they don't they don't they don't go with like Jeff Okador. He's a corner. He doesn't go number three. Chase Young. He doesn't go number two. Yeah, I mean, but that that's the whole thing with the, the looking back. Like yeah. It, yeah, obviously it's different every year. Like I I can tell you right now. Yeah, the regular doesn't now, go 21. five years from now, you look back at 2024, yeah. nobody. And I mean it with my with every part of my being. Me with your chest. Nobody's gonna look back at Michigan's quarterback and say, Yeah, that's a top five pick. Look how great he is. <laughs> okay. I, I uh, expect you're more likely to look back in five years and go, wow, how did Atlanta get away with getting Michael Penix where they did? Yeah. Then they are. Yeah. Then people are going to look back and go, yeah, Michigan. I can remember his name already. That is yeah. how little I think of that guy. Yeah. I, um, I don't know. I'm just saying. This to to re- to end the podcast for the 2510, they called a few players to get their first reaction when you hear the word Chip Kelly. They There's called a player or two on that list that I'm not going to agree with. They called they called Brandon Graham. Yep. And Brandon Graham said he, that he was a selfish person. He wasn't prepared for the NFL. And I agree was, with he, both and those he did, statements. And, and he didn't, and he wasn't ready to be a coach in the NFL. That's what it, Brandon Graham said. That he was selfish. I, very selfish. I would only thing I would have rewritten there personally, like listen to him. I think I would definitely have said maybe he wasn't ready to be an, a head coach. Yeah. I think. To this day, because I, I know Miguel just mentioned, like, listening to Chip Kelly speak and watching him as a college football fan and what he did with Oregon, if any team could get him as part of their staff in an analytical role in which he didn't have direct, like, if it was he watched all the games, did all the analysts, and just spoke with the coaches and gave them everything he sees, they yeah. would thrive. Because well, I've got a, I've got a nice question for you at the end of this, at okay. the end of these two questions. All right. You ever on the other players? I forgot. It was hard. Yeah. So if you mentioned next... Jason Peters, I'm not. I'm not going to deal with it. You don't go. To, <laughs> you don't go to Dallas and talk about how, how how you don't like Philly anymore, and then come back trying to talk anything about any of our coaches. I don't give a shit. You don't count. Get out of here. You don't. I'm, I'm done with so, you. So you yes, Jason Dallas. get out of here. No, definitely did not like. <laughs> <You're trash. laughs> did not like. Did not like Chip Kelly. Kelly oh, he's a cowboy. I don't. I don't care. He's a cowboy. Okay. That's like, that's like calling up. That's like calling up Zeke and saying, "Hey, how do you like the Eagles?" No, get out of here. Now, get out of here. Uh, I'm not doing I, that. I, I. I. Okay. So you are not a fan of Jason Pierce because he went to the Cowboys, correct? No, because he went to the Cowboys and then he immediately talked shit on us and was like, "Hey, like this is better." Like, no, if you go there and still and you're still like, "Hey, I just want to play the game," and you don't get in on it, fine, cool. You get a little beef during the game, whatever. But you go there and immediately turn around and talk shit about the Eagles fans and the and, and the city. No, get out of here. I'm, I'm not. You don't count. You're not an Eagle. Well, he has some choice words about Chip Kelly. He called him a bullshit yeah, well, ass can... bullshit ass guy. He didn't like him at all. Uh, it sounds he, like he was, was talking about himself. Yeah. You know, I was watching. Uh, I'll, 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 I want to. Di- I want to di- to dis uh, to change oh. directions. Uh, the third guy was Jason Macklin, and his first word was trash. Jeremy Macklin. Jeremy Macklin. Oh yeah. You said Jason. 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 Yeah. You know why you said Jason Macklin? Name one thing you remember of Jeremy Macklin's career. He was consistent. Consistently mediocre. (laughs) Consistently mediocre. He was good. I liked it. He was Jeremy Macklin. I had a Macklin jersey. Yeah, I did. I had had a Macklin shirt. I didn't have a jersey at the time when I was poor, but I was excited for him to come out of college, and he ended up just being kind of meh. He I won mean, a Super Bowl. Won a Super Bowl maybe with, uh, he Chief. did better than Rager, but like that's not saying much. Uh, I, I, I like you're like when you go ahead. Like, look, the fact is, when they called Brandon Graham, Graham gave a great response. I agree, and I saw that clip, 
And I agreed. I just imagine right now. I agree with Graham's response. And I've said it multiple times. Like I I, I like some of the moves Chip did, mainly because I look back on now and say, hey, his moves led to a team that won the Super Bowl. I, I get, you know, I mean, it happened when he was when he went over to San Fran, didn't work well either. No, he didn't. And then he went back to college, UCLA, bottom of the fucking Pac-12. Suddenly, they're fighting for for bowl games. They're winning seasons. He now, clearly has an idea of what he's doing. Well, now we're gonna now. This is how do you feel about this, Mark? Oh. Chip Kelly is now the offensive coordinator at your one of your favorite schools, Ohio, Ohio State. State. Ohio State. Uh, oh, you know what, Chip boy. Kelly, I used to like you, and now I hope that I hope things go terribly wrong. <laughs> he just he just went. I got to turn my back on you now. I got you done. You're done to me. He's he's trashed the mark. Chip Kelly's trashed the mark now because he went to Ohio State. I know it's going you know to suck. You know I got to suck. It's gonna it's gonna be terrible because I literally just said it. Any team that can get him on the staff where he's not, I mean, I think he's coordinator, you said, right? Offensive coordinator. All right, so he'll still be in with the players, but I think, again, I think college kids are going to take better to listening to what they're told to do than NFL players will. Ohio State's already, as much as I hate it, a very good team. Yeah, how do you feel about this now? I'm going to hate this with a passion. <laughs> Dan Lanning, I, 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 I enthrall you to do your absolute best this year because we have to play Ohio State. Go Ducks. Um, Next year they're coming to Penn State, and guess I don't care how much it costs. I'm going to that game. I will be there for that game. But uh, Chip, Chip, I get it. I get it. again. It's a job, and you got to go where the where the job's available to you, where they want you. And uh, I don't like you for it. I hate Ohio State with a passion. It's gonna suck seeing you be successful at a terrible school that sucks. Uh, I don't. I don't want to. I don't. I don't. No. Okay. Bro, he broke Mark by just saying that he's going to be with yeah, Ohio State. I've been trying to ignore that. Mark, I, broke I hate Ohio State. <laughs> it's been a long day, boys. Ohio State yes. never makes it better. Yeah. Except when they lose. Right. Uh, so with that, I think uh, I think there was a, a I think it was a good conversation. I think we had a good conversation here about Chip Kelly. I think we are now kind of like on the same page of where this, we're out. This, out this, might, this conversation <laughs> might be the end of ever a, a podcast with Will it though? his name in it. That's it. This yeah. is it though. I, feel like, really? I feel like the last couple in this, the draw, it has it's to not be. even me. It has, it to, has be. to be because he's at Ohio State now. How can you still talk about a man that you despise? Oh, like right. I exactly. Think the last couple times been brought up though, hasn't even been me. It's always no. been one of you two. Yes, I, true. I went multiple co- podcasts going like, I'm not going to say anything about Chip. I don't care what they say. And then you guys bring up Chip like. <laughs> <laughs> Dan Lanning That's in it. this bitch. Can't There's help us. Can't help us. It. That's it. Chip oh. Kelly conversation. Yeah, I think we can probably put a, put a, put a fork in it. It's done. We're done so talking here's my about question. it. Are yeah. they done talking about it? They should be. Think- because that, that's one thing I'm saying is like you guys, like I said, they're out of the league. They've been out of the league. They've been mm-hmm. talking about it. They've been complaining. Bro, no, we, we're, we're I, past that, man. Move I, on. Listen, uh, what I believe was like, okay, they weren't really allowed to speak on the subject for a long time. You're coming out with a podcast. They know that they're going to get the uh, Eagles fan base at least to tune in and talk about, uh, listen to what they had to say about Chip. Yep. It's a it was a smart move because it's one the one topic that everybody wants to hear from, and then they can go from there. They just got to initially grab a big fan base. I'll bet money that if they had started their podcast at the Novacare Complex, which I'm sure they're still allowed to have access to, at least at the front gate, I'm sure that the security guards are all gonna be chill, talking with the players, just ask them how they feel, like the rookies coming in, probably some of the vets there, be like, hey, what are you looking forward to this year? And discuss like you know a little comparison of like their first time coming to the Nova care, coming to the Eagles and these guys coming in talk about, you know, the hype for the season. I'll bet you it probably gets more listens and more views than the one they just put on. Well, this, this view, this episode where they talk about chip Kelly, right. Right now it's been, uh, it's been seven days since it was out. It has 260,000 views. Their Ooh. episode before that, which was, is, was two weeks ago, only has 27,000. So well, they I got yeah, a I think lot of views. I mean, I don't get wrong. I think you're right. They want of people that. are going to tune into this, but that's because they've been making noise about it for years. I think, though, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, 
I think that I think that's the last time because like, you're beating a dead horse at this point. Because I think they have talked about it, even if they weren't supposed to. I think they, they've obviously made it known. Everyone has known how they felt about Chip for a while. But I think I think yeah. this has to pretty much be the last time they can bring it up because anymore. Yeah. And it's like, come on, man. They had eight no, I, I agree. What'd you say? What'd they you just say? had to expand on it, make it you know topic that everybody wanted to listen to. Yeah, I think you can you can safely say that they uh, they got everything off their chest. They explained everything how from their side. Well, we'll probably never hear it from Chip's side of the view, but that's never. I'll be honest. I've watched enough interviews with Chip to know that like something in his brain works when it comes to things like. And again, the whole reason I mentioned it on analysis when it comes to seeing trends. That's why I mean he was part of the you know. What helped the Patriots to sign their team? He went and rebrought up Oregon to be how good they were. Like he's very good. He's very analytical. He's even in interviews. He wasn't always the best social guy. I don't know if you guys remember when he was doing um, uh, the you know the, like NFL talk shows and such mm-hmm. when he first left. You know before he went to UCLA, mm-hmm. they went to him for analysis, but he wasn't really like the conversational guy that you're looking for. He wasn't like, Mr. Personality. No, even so when you're, you're you're the, little Eagles, the little Eagles network, the, the the thing that they do inside the Novacare complex, where they like with Dave Spadaro, yeah, and they like break down like a play, and then he's very like, this is the play, this is what happened. Or, uh, there's no, there's no uh, connection. Yeah, you know, and, just, I, and and yeah, it's just who he is. So yeah, I don't yeah. think you're ever gonna hear a response from him. And I don't think, and I, you know what? No, I think at the same time it would be classless for him to come out and have a response to them about the way they talk about him. If someone asked him was, Hey, how do you, did you get to hear about it? If he goes, yeah, I heard it. And you know, they have their own opinion. That's fine. Great. Yeah. If someone asked him, he goes, I didn't hear it. I, I don't plan on listening to it. I'm more focused on this. Also great. If yeah. they ask him and he goes back, cause yeah, well they were assholes. He didn't listen. Well, that's classless. I'm sorry. Yeah. He talks to you on you, whatever. Be the bigger man. You're in a different part. Like I was saying, like the whole point now is that like, we've all moved on, right? Like we're all, 2024 not 2014 so at this point like come on all right let's look to the yeah. future you know? yeah agreed so yeah, yeah you're never it, gonna i don't think you're gonna ever hear a word from chip about this and about that podcast no no definitely not all right uh that will Go do fire. it for us that will do it for us uh you know it's a good year right now phillies are the best team in baseball best record in baseball eagles are looking good this uh, looking good on paper for right now uh, the Sixers, you know, I don't know. I don't know the Sixers Let's are. Let's not talk about them right now. Hey, you know so, what? Uh, flyers. I know you guys are, are are the biggest fans of hockey. However, mm-hmm. I will say there's definitely an energy in the air around the Flyers. Obviously, it's not Eagles level. It's not a team as big as the Eagles, but the fan base is excited, and I think kind of surprised because I think they did. You know, they did very well this year. The playoffs are a bit much. I understand the end of this year. And now I look back on it, it goes, hey, you know, we started losing. We made a couple of trades at the end, but we traded away guys who were like going to be unrestricted need. free agent. Not that we, oh, yeah, we didn't need, but they would have, they were at the end of their contract. They would have cost us a lot of money. And in return, we got young guys and we got drafts. We got oh, draft they picks. They yeah. lost the goalie, right? With that, that we, we, we did lose part, goal. but we ended up, Arison played really well. We have two new goalies that just came into the season. And uh, then they traded a draft pick. Then in their draft pick, demand a trade. We did trade away one of the draft picks for somebody, but I think we got, um, you know, if we can get the guy we drafted last year, the Russian, he's a uh, forward over in, he's still playing in Russia. If he gets released from his contract there and can come over, he's going to be a hell of a talent. There's current couple trade rumors that if we were to go for, I think that you'd find that this team would be not, would, a, not a contender, but they'd be competitive, and you would definitely right. see us make the playoffs next year. They have, I mean, they have the twelfth pick this year too, so they we'll got to do the twelfth pick. That. I mean, as much adversity as they faced early on in the season, for them to have been still in the playoff picture at the end was was pretty impressive, I would say. Because I mean, I don't follow hockey all that much, but I any team that takes a devastating hit like that early in the season usually just they just fold up and call it a season. Yeah, so, as I said, so I think they're pretty excited for next year. So going yeah. off what you're saying there, Mike, I think Phillies right now look phenomenal. I think do. the Eagles are set up to have a great season. I think the Flyers are going to have a really good, happy season. I think the Sixers, even if we're still kind of, obviously we're still a little hurt from the Sixers end of the year. 
I still think you expect them to have a really good year next year. I mean, we're not losing anyone that I'm aware of that's vital to the team. Um, uh, they're losing a lot of players, but they got, they got a lot of players they need to sign this year. And they're, they're, they're losing dead weight with a certain wingman. I'm not going to say his name on this podcast. All right, well, how about this? Are we, are we, are we, are we, what did you say? Points in the fourth quarter. He doesn't have his, deserve to have his name said on this podcast. Are, are we Zero losing in the fourth quarter? Are we losing Embiid? It's almost no. bad as Ben Are Simmons. we losing Maxi? Worse. No. It's worse. No, he just got the uh, okay. award for Sportsman of the Year. So, okay. congratulations. Those, uh, there's Maxie. one other player on the team whose name I can't I thought I could remember. I don't remember. Yeah, it's I, weird, right? It's I don't remember weird. players, man. I think it was J. Cole. J. Cole? I think it was J. Cole. <laughs> it's not, it's not it. It Nate, Bert, it. Nate, Nate Bertram. Nate Bertram. No. All I'm saying is that I'm looking back on like, look, Nick Bertram, Nick Bertram. I believe the Sixers are still going to be a good team next year. Hopefully, a better team. You yeah, know, hopefully, a team is healthy. God, hey, no, I don't know. Please, no, it. I can't you. deal with that baloney. I don't want to deal with it. I can't either, but Bron- it makes he's going to get drafted by the Sixers, and then LeBron's going to be l- released from his contract for the Lakers, and he'll sign with the Philadelphia 76ers. <laughs> Can I get the please, Michael please. Scott? Uh, no, please, no. <laughs> yeah, agreed. <laughs> Look, hey, it's no. it's gonna happen. Watch. No, Sixers. I think it's gonna be good though. Like I said, all right. I think the Union are still like they're kind of in for right now, but I think they're gonna have a pretty good season. All around, I think Philly sports are in a good spot. As much as it's hurt us, I mean, think about it. Look like, again, how hurt are we the past two years? All the losses we've had in the finals. But yeah. how many other cities can say our teams routinely get to the finals? Right. Yeah. I mean, the Sixers made it almost all the way. The Phillies re- repeatedly made it right up to the end. Ten the years ago. Eagles. Ten years ago, when Mike Missinelli was on, uh, on the Fanatic, he always used to say, wait till the 2020s. Philadelphia sports is going to be the top class of all sports. I mean, and and I, about, like, and I said, what are you? I'm like, no way. Like, because 10 years ago, he, 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 we were terrible. We were terrible. By yeah, oh, yeah. But I mean, yeah. now look at it. I mean, if you look, like I said, there's no other city, sports city, I would say, that has as many teams looking as great as we do. I mean, by yeah. Way, I'm surprised Mike's not on the radio again. I'm surprised. I, 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 I gotta tell you, like when he left, it, I, I kind of stopped listening to the radio because I liked it. I enjoyed listening to him. Yeah, I, I, liked, I, 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 I went back to WIP and I, I liked their morning show, but yeah. Yeah. No, and then and then then I got into listening to Anthony Gargano, and then he got fired from the from the fan. He did, yeah, because he kind of he was a breach of contract, and because uh. he kind of was he joined a podcast that was competing with the fanatic, mm. and it was in his contract where he couldn't, so they fired him, and mm. so now he's got his own little like his so own he did podcast. It on he did. Sorta, he did he did on purpose. Yeah. He probably was mad because Mike was his boy too. So yeah, yeah, but. I kind of like don't listen to it as much anymore as I, as much as I used to. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'll be honest. I don't listen to radio like at all. Like podcast. Yeah. yeah they just, made, they just made more cuts. They just cut more people from the fanatic. There, they got like a a small group of people now. It's just wild. Mm. Yeah. Radio, radio, slowly dying. It's very, yeah. very sp- uh, few sports um, talk shows it's, still left. If it, yeah, it's not as big as it New York, used to. Yeah, it's not. Well, I mean, you think about it, most channels for radio, like, they spend how much of the day listening to music and such, and now that music is almost no longer on radio, you only have talk shows, which you yeah. have podcasts for. So, yep. you know, if you think of how many people, like, you know, like you say, oh, you listen to the, the morning show. Well, what happens if you switch to night shift? You're going to miss that morning show, aren't you? Yeah, I listen to it on a pod. and, and so you, You'll to listen to it on a pod. Right. Exactly. So the morning show is like, yeah, that's my point. It's like the radio, the real time stuff is just, it's losing its appeal because it's, it's, we're in a point in the world where it's, I want to see it when I have the time to see it. I want to listen to it when I have the time to listen to it. I listen to podcasts on on demand. Everybody likes all the time. I have a very keen thing of like, if I'm going to work, I'm going to a job and the job is more than 20 minutes away, but less than 40 minutes away, I listen to music. If it's over 40 minutes away, I typically put on a podcast. And it's like anything under like twenty minutes, I almost like don't even put anything on because typically I'm, I'm you know, I'm there in no time anyway. So it's like I, I don't have time for radio. I don't even know. Yeah. I don't even know what radio stations I would listen to anymore. Yeah, yeah. 
And if you have made it all the way to the end of this podcast, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, We appreciate you and uh, appreciate you listening. Hey, and we want to hear from you. Give us a call. Send us an email. Drop us a DM, whatever. We want to hear about you. Yeah, we do. We love hearing about you. I love Addis Player. Let's go. Tell us how much you love Chip Kelly. (laughs) Tell you how much you love the Eagles and how much we hate the State. (laughs) You already know how we do. E-A-G-L-E-S. Eagles. Let's go, Birds. Go, Birds. Hey, Mike. They probably going to pull it down if you play it. But they not like us by Kendrick Lamar. I see dead people. Hi, monster on the beat. Deep boat, then he rap. He a free throw, man down. Call an ember lambs. Tell him, please, bro. Nella to the cross. He walk around like Tizo. What's up with these Jabroni? Yeah, trying to see Compton. The industry can hate me. Marlon, they mama. How many options you really got? I mean, it's too many options. I'm finna pass on this body. I'm John Stockton. Beat your ass and hide the Bible if God watching. Sometimes you gotta pop out and show n- Certified boogie man, I'm the one that up to score with him. Walking down whole time, I know he got some h- him. Pull on him, extort, bully the floor on him. Say Drake, I hear you like I'm young. You better not ever go to cell block one. To any that talk to him and they in love, just make sure you hide your little sister from him. They tell me Chubb's the only one that get your hand-me-downs And party at the party playing with his nose now And Baca got a weird case, why is he around? Certified lover boy, certified the fouls Wop, 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 that f***em up Wop, 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 I'ma do my stuff Why you trolling like a b- ain't you tired? Trying to strike a chord and it's probably A minor They not like us, they not like us, they not like us they not like us, they not like us, they not like us You think the bay gon' let you disrespect pop? I think that Oakland show gon' be your last stop They cold foul, I don't know why you still pretending What is the owl, bird, then bird, go The audience not dumb, shape the stories how you want Hey Drake, they're not slow Rabbit hole is still deep, I can go further, I promise Ain't there some B-Rest that's for bitchin' You Malibu most wanted, ain't no law boy You ball boy, fish Gatorade or something Since 2009, I had this Jumping, you get a wedgie, be flipped over your boxes, or over your foe. The other vaginal option, better straighten they posture. Got famous all up in contact, might write this with a doctor. Tell a pop star, quit hiding. The caption won't action, no accident. I'm hands on, he around, get polished. Don't Wayne grow while he was in jail, that's conniving. Then get his face tatted like a b- apologizing. I'm glad D Rose came home, y'all didn't deserve him either. From a laundry down to Central, better not speak on Serena. And your homeboy needs subpoena. That predator moving flocks, that name gotta be registered and placed on neighborhood watch. I lean on you. Like a n- line of walk, yeah, it's all eyes on me and I'ma send it up the park. Ay, put the roll label on me, I'ma get them dropped. Ay, tweet chin music and I won't pass the ox. Ay, how many stocks do I really have in stock? Ay, one, two, three, four, five, plus five. Ay, devil is a lie, here's 69 God. Ay, freaky it, need to stay there inside. Ay, roll it up like a fresh pack of Zon. Ay, city is back up, it's a must, we outside. Ay. They not like us. 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 Once upon a time, all of us was in chains. Homie still double down, calling us some slaves. Atlanta was the mecca, building railroads and trains. Bear with me for a second, let me put y'all on game. The settlers was using town folk to make them richer. Fast forward, 2024, you got the same agenda. You run to Atlanta when you need a check balance. Let me break it down for you, this the real challenge. You call future when you didn't see the club. Hey, what? Lil' baby help you get your lingo up. What? 21, get your first street cred. Thug makes you feel like you a slime in your head. Hey, what? Cravo said you can be from north side. What? 2 chains say you good, but he lied. You run to Atlanta when you need a few dollars. No, you not a colleague. You a colonizer. The family matter and the truth for the matter. Here was God's plan to show y'all the liar. Mmm. He a fan, he a fan, he a fan. Mm. He a fan, he a fan, he a freaky. He a 69 God, freaky. He a 69 God. Hey, 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 run for your life. Hey, 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 run for your life. Freaky. He a 69 God, freaky. He a 69 God. Hey, 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 run for your life. Hey, 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 run for your life. Let me say, O V, O V, O V, O V. Step this way, step that way, then step this way, step that way. Are you my friend? 
Are we locked in? Then step this way, step that way, then step this way, step that way.